o'clock. Three o'clock? Yeah. Happy New Year all. We were about to head off on a beautiful ride. Blue sky and a bit of sun out. And just as we were heading off, everything changed. Pouring rain, grey sky. We've decided to carry on anyway. I'm more enthusiastic than Monica. Monica won't let me film because she's wearing about 13 <laughs> layers now, a mixture of waterproofs and thermals. So that's probably all you're going to see of Monica. We'll have a coffee here and then I found Monica a place that we can go for a pub lunch. It's in one of our favourite little towns, which is Woodbridge, right next to Ipswich. Beautiful, tiny little town. And within that town is a recently refurbished, renovated, put under new ownership pub that's said to be the 12th oldest pub in England. You know, in a funny way, I actually enjoy it, the winter rides, because we were eight months in Tenerife, and so long as you have the right biking gear, and I'll do a full gear of the day outside just so, so you can see. If you've got the right biking gear, it's genuinely still fun riding in the winter. I mean, Monica may disagree with you, but all of the gear I've got on now, protection from the wind, protected from the cold, and loving it. And there's something very moody and mysterious about riding in the rain <laughs> and grey. I do like it. And I like it especially because the Bonneville, I have to give an update, this will be the last I give because I can confirm it's worked. All of those starting issues I had with the Bonneville, where I always had to carry my screwdriver around and it was always having to jump start it by crossing the starter solenoid, gone. I haven't had an issue on the bike for three months now. All I had to do was change the battery on the bike and it transformed all of my starting issues. So it goes to show, you can put your battery on charge, the battery charger can say that the battery's got full level of charge, there's nothing wrong with it, it's healthy. But sometimes you just have to completely ignore that and buy a new battery. My battery was about two and a half years old when I got rid of it. And if I just would have listened to the battery charger, I would have forever thought there's some deep down issue with my bike. When there wasn't, the only thing wrong with it is the poor thing needed a new battery. So I'm delighted. I don't go around with a screwdriver anymore and I ride completely stress-free like it's a new bike and I have a genuine newfound love of the Bonneville. I promise you now, no plans to sell it at all. Monica doesn't have to deal with me going on eBay and auto trade or anything like that. I have a clear conscience. Winter gear for the day. Completely unintentional here, but about half the stuff I'm wearing is from Triumph. This is the Beck 2 jacket from Triumph. I think it comes in at about 400 pounds, so it is expensive, but the quality is stunning. You can see beautiful inner lining here with then a removable thermal lining, waxed cotton, just stunning quality, and they thought of everything. So you can do the zip up, and then once you do the buckle up, it actually goes through this bit here and folds along there so it's really really nice and slick but just a beautiful thing including even a pocket in the thermal liner as well to make it easy whether you're wearing it or not goes right up to the top like that it is i would say 98 percent waterproof just with a bit at the top but it's probably my favorite winter jacket with regards to quality and style it's a beautiful thing next up hood jeans k7s these are the the boot fit jeans. Now, for me, these are important for winter riding, and here's the reason. I put on a pair of slimmer fitting jeans, and because I've got long johns under these to protect from the cold, to add an extra layer of insulation, I literally couldn't move. I was having to walk like this. <laughs> these, the fact that they're a bit looser means you can easily fit long johns underneath, and they're extremely tough and warm, so they're brilliant for the winter. Plus the fact they're boot cut, so the jeans usually stay below the top of the boots so they protect from the wind and the rain as well. They're a very, very good pair of winter jeans. This is just Triumph Lifestyle Collection. I love this classic mm -hmm. style I really Triumph. Like this it's nice, isn't yeah. it? It's, you just go on the Triumph website, at the top it will say Lifestyle Collection, click on that and things like this will be there, as well as the belt. That's Triumph Lifestyle Collection belt as well. 
TCXX Blend Boots, you know, I, I've had so many different kinds of boots. This is the first pair I ever had after owning pretty much plastic, plastic boots up to there is what I used to wear until I understood about this modern classic gear. Mm -hmm. This is the first pair of boots I ever owned after that. And it's, it's still my favorite pair of boots. I wear them more than any other. I must have had them coming up to three years now. I can't believe it. They're still perfect. Don't see why they won't last 10, 15 years without any issue at all. And the helmets, Monica with the 75, me with the exclusive. And that's it. Oh no, that's not it. Let me just show. Now I usually leave my keys in restaurants. Oh, I've got them. Let me show the gloves because these are my pick of winter gloves. So let's, they're both from Racer, 1927, French company. This is, let me just find the name of these. Okay, I'll write them down. I can't remember the name, but I'll write that down. This is Monica's pick. Mm -hmm. Racer 1927, leather black back with a yellow inner, extra protection there, or extra, you know, wear resistance there, mm -hmm. with a thermal lining. Yeah, it's very warm. Yeah? Yeah. So they get a thumbs up from Monica. For me, because I usually get the brunt of the cold, I quite like these. These are, again, Racer 1927, and let me be completely honest, they are not the finest looking pair of gloves I've ever seen. They're not. I don't want to be dishonest, but they're small, they're slim. They're made from Gore-Tex, so they are waterproof as well. I, I kind of wish I'd be a bit more stealthy without this thing here, but they do a good job and they balance warmth, water resistance, and still bit, you know, not being ridiculously huge with that big thing that goes over the top. Keep above five degrees and they're very good. Anything below and you'll get frostbite, but they're still probably the best balanced winter gloves that I have. Right to the 12th oldest pub in England. We're trying to decide where we're going to get a base in England and Woodbridge is one of the places on our shortlist. So I do like coming here and just having a look, seeing what's on the rental market property wise because it's such a nice little town. Also it's got probably my favourite shop that I've ever <laughs> been to. If you like your clothes and things, they've got one shop in Woodbridge, one in Ipswich, it's called Uniform Research. Two guys own it, they hand pick everything. It's ridiculous how much I've spent in here. And they've got a sale on as well. Hmm. We okay, better let, not go let's in. Let's go to the pub. Yeah, let's not go in. It's too, too dangerous. After going up Danny on the KTM and just seeing how easy things were, I've, okay, turning the Bonneville into an adventure bike <laughs> is a bit of a stretch. 
But I have just ordered from Motone a helmet lock for my bike because it's definitely one thing that's really missing from the Bonneville. So that should arrive. I'm hoping by tomorrow or Thursday and then I'll have a proper stealth looking helmet lock so I can just lock my helmet to the left hand side of the bike mm -hmm. seamlessly. I think that could be a bit of a game changer. I'm really excited for that. We're here. Ye old bell and steel yard. 1540 that was built. Pretty much 500 years old. 12th oldest pub in definitely England, possibly the UK. I had no idea what steel yard meant, so I did a bit of Googling. I assumed it meant they made steel, and at the back there would have been an old factory producing steel. That's completely wrong. Steel yard is this thing poking out the side, mm. and it's the old version of a weighbridge where a lorry drives on to effectively some scales on the ground and you can weigh stuff. So that is a weighing device there. Mm. You would hang corn or other things right at the tip counterweight on the other side and that'll be used to weigh and then value different bits of produce grain and things like that and apparently that can weigh up to three tons wow that's very interesting isn't it so that's what steel yard is <laughs> nothing to do with steel production at all <laughs> closed <laughs> no open at three o'clock three o'clock yep. what is the time now I am soaking wet, Freddy. Mm -hmm. Same. One thirty. One thirty. No, we can't wait that long. We can't stand around on the street for an hour and a half. To <laughs> okay, look, we've given you a history lesson. Now let's go to Starbucks. To Starbucks. <laughs> yes, let's go. Oh, such a shame. Just saw the opening times, three till eleven. Sure, it said they did lunches, but. I must have been wrong. Anyway, it's meant to be really nice here. We'll definitely come back. 500 year old pub with a huge amount of history. I don't even know, if, do they have a Starbucks or Cafe Nero here? What do you Cafe fancy? Cafe Nero. Let's go to Cafe Nero. Actually, my brother gave me a Christmas gift, 50 pound voucher at Cafe Nero. So Monica, <laughs> this is on me. Folkington, rhubarb and apples from the English countryside. <laughs> it's delicious. We were so lucky to get a table. We went to two different pubs, both open at three o'clock, then two different coffee shops, all full to the brim. So we're in this little alleyway in Honey and Harvey, which is a brilliant restaurant. So we're delighted. We finally managed to find somewhere to get food and drink. We're about to head back. Yeah, it's still raining, but I mean, I'm fine with all the gear. Monica, are you dreading going back? Yes, I am. Just shows you've got to have the right gear. It's a game changer. I think now I've decided Monica and I are going to go down to maybe Urban Rider in London, see if we can get her some proper winter gear so Thank she's sorted. You. That would be great. Yeah, finally. I keep putting it off and putting it off. It's not fair, is it? I have the finest gear money can buy, <laughs> and then Monica's just wearing an old raincoat and stuff like that. So we'll go down, we'll try and sort Monica out as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. See you in the next one when I'm hoping 
If everything's come from Motown, I'm going to do a bit of work on making the Bonneville even more perfect for my requirements. Newly inspired after riding the adventure bike. So thanks so much everyone. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. See you all in the next one.